Now I would very much like to give the floor to Antonio Correa de Campos, who is a long-standing politician, first here in Portugal, now in Europe, not only member of, uh, of the European Parliament, but also uh, chairman, uh, president of uh, STOA, and STOA is the European Parliament's Technology Assessment uh, Committee Office Unit. Um, Mr. Correa de Campos, we are looking forward to listening to you. Good morning. Uh, thank you to Pasita for inviting the STOA panel in the European Parliament to be present here. Uh, I'm very glad to be here by several reasons. Uh, first of all is because I, I'm at home. Secondly, uh, we have sunny, uh, sunny day, uh, and we have not sunny day since four months, at least in Portugal, which is rare. And, and thirdly, because I'm, I'm seeing many familiar faces here around the tables, and especially a special compliment to my colleague from 35 years ago at Johns Hopkins, Felix Kurzwiller, that uh, we uh, tend to see each other every 10 years or 15 years. Maybe 15 years from now, we both will see each other. Well, thank you very much. We, we um, as you know, technology has drastically changed the way we live, the way we communicate and relate to each other. Uh, we find it hard to conceive uh, a different reality from the one we enjoy today without the freedom offered by our mobility and communication patterns, without the safety of easily assessing a medication to treat our illness, or simply without living thermic comfort in our homes. Our current living and consumption patterns were built on our technological capacity. This in turn led to direct negative consequences such as overexploitation of resources, climate change and loss of biodiversity. Technological advancement also brought indirect but important consequences such as a smaller world and the globalized economy. From an European perspective, and despite all its benefits, this entails a number of risks and raises important concerns for citizens, such as higher unemployment, the threat to the European social model, and the potential loss of wealth. The impacts of science and technology are therefore vast, and they have huge implications at both national and international level affecting the economy, global environment, and our geopolitical decision. A good understanding of the interaction between science and society are growingly important for policy making in order to mitigate risks, avoid gaps in regulation, and to increase social welfare, making the most out of future opportunities. In its Europe 2020 strategy document, the European Commission outlines its vision for the future. Science and innovation are at the core of this strategy. Many of the flagship initiatives and instruments that cascade down are intended to support and enable both scientific progress and technological innovation. They are designed to bring about sustainable and smart economic growth for Europe by breeding an optimal ecosystem firm for the promotion of science, education and innovation. TA, technology, technology assessment, and foresight activities must play a role in underpinning policy responses by anticipating outlooks for the future. Governments and parliaments are in better position to prepare and influence it towards preferred outcomes. This is more so when expectations in ST, uh, science and technology, are so high, including the sustaining economic competitiveness and job creation. Devising a sub-optimal science and technology policy framework entails an enormous cost of opportunity in the current global context. Parliaments play a key role in approving legislation and promoting good governance and oversight of the executive power. There is growing need for a sustained dialogue between scientists, society and members of parliament. Technology assessment is essential to provide in-depth accurate 
and independent information which makes decision makers aware of technology and of its implications for the future, contributing towards better policy making. The role of science and technology options assessment, STOA, body of the, Europe, body of the European Parliament lies both in policy design and in support of policy making. STOA's mission is to provide, in a neutral and independent way, studies assessing a range of options to underpin policy decisions. This should ensure that maps are provided with state-of-art knowledge to reflect upon when carrying out their policy tasks, at the same time considering other factors such as their individual political and ethical values. I would like to briefly illustrate with two of our most recent pieces of work in STOA. The first one relates to the project named Science Metrics. There is a constant debate about the value and productivity of research and innovation. Uh, innovation activities funded by public monies. Measuring such impact is a complex problem with many methodological difficulties because impacts of R&D are deferred in time, and they have spillover effects, which are difficult to capture and measure. However, there is a traditional battle for the allocation of funds among policy instruments and among scientific areas. For example, in the context of the definition of Horizon 2020 program, there was a fierce battle among several programs. Also, as such sums are progressively directly directed to innovation and to close-to-market application, one must ensure that rational principles apply, demanding greater accountability and evidence-based policy. Our initial study highlighted a number of actions to be pursued, but our objective is to pave the way towards more effective science and technology policy tools, measurement tools. I'm sure that on coming five years, we heard a lot about science metrics. Another study, technology options for feeding 10 billion people, explored the possible contribu contributes of technology towards a more sustainable food supply chain, and how much out such technological potential could feed into new policy measures, namely regarding water usage and the common agriculture policy. Results of this work fed into an European Parliament resolution already for action against food waste and into the common agriculture policy debate. I hope that uh, we, you may find documentation about uh, STOA and about these studies uh, in the documentation tapes. And uh, uh, I, I hope that the package of the documentation had arrived in good shape here. I'm not sure. It is. It is. Okay. Fine. Good news. Based upon the needs expressed by different parliamentary committees, STOA provides the parliamentary bodies and their members with impartial scientific information and studies. This helps them to assess the impact of the introduction of promotion or promotion of new technologies and identify from a technological point of view the best possible options for action. In the same context, STOA is the unique body within the European Parliament which deals with societal aspects of science and technology and act as a reliable partner of civil society and scientific community at decision-making level. STOA pursues this role inter alia via outreach activities such as the active participation of panel members in international science policy forum, and we have been present in the first the two initial the two former activities of PACITA, both in Czech Republic and in in, in Copenhagen in 2012, uh, through the organization of workshops open to the public and through its emblematic event. Our emblematic event is the annual lecture. Uh, which involves uh, very high-profile scientists or members of society. We have been lucky enough to have Tim Berners-Lee. Um, later on, we have uh, the, the two Nobel Prizes of the Higgs boson, Higgs and Professor, uh, a Belgian person that uh, got the Nobel Prize with Professor Higgs. 
And the last year we had uh, Ismail Serageldin, the president of the Alexandria Library. Uh, however, this part, the great, this year we are going to have uh, 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 the Nobel Prize uh, from uh, Medicine and Physiology in 93, uh, 2013. Uh, it's a German person living in the United States, Schultz. Uh, well, never, never mind. Uh, however, uh, despite the great potential of technology assessment, recent events, the economic downturn and some natural, nature caused technological disasters may suggest an insufficient integration of evidence-based in decision-making processes. There are inherent difficulties and barriers at the interface between TA and policymakers, which are, some of them are important to mention. First, the decentralized nature of European decision-making process. This entails many stakeholders with different, differing experiences, views and concerns on the implication of political decisions. Secondly, Evidence provided by TA shall be seen as only one of the elements for decision support. In the process of policy making, long term views often contend with short term priorities. In this balance, incentives are often on the side of short termism, as measures often cause a more direct impact on people's lives and offer a best match with political cycles. Another point of concern is the inherent limitation and degree of uncertainty linked to anticipative intelligence. Unforeseen events make it impossible to fully account today for the future. Trust building and project buying by policymakers can be facilitated when they are directly involved along the different stages of the project, leading to the development of a shared understanding of the issues at stake. Finally, technical assistance provided insights may appear not to be duly and immediately considered by policymaking. However, informing, raising awareness and sensitizing policymakers is sometimes a gradual process. During this uh, legislature, under both my chairmanship and my colleague Paul Rubik's chairmanship that precedes me, STUA has been learning and working to overcome such barriers, making STUA more visible and more responsible to the needs of members of the European Parliament. During this period, STUA has also contributed towards parliamentary technology assessment capacity in Europe by holding an observer status at PASITA project and having a regular pres presence at EPTA. And we have also carried out an important study on technology assessment across borders, making a review of TA practices within the European Union and exploring possible ways forward to develop and perform pan-European parliamentary technology assessments. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I feel confident that parliamentary techno technology, technology assessment will be strengthening itself in the years to come. Opportunities and risks brought about by science are the, of utmost importance in our modern society, demanding throughout knowledge and advice to enable effective governance systems. Thank you for your attention.